Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be wrapping up all 14 books that I read in March and these are all books that I read for the Irish Readathon. Thank you so much to everyone who took part in the Readathon this year. It brought me so much joy seeing what everyone was reading and having conversations with you all about the Irish books that you were picking up in March. Whether you picked up one book, you fulfilled all the challenges or if you, like me, decided to read entirely Irish books throughout March, just thank you so much for joining in. It means the absolute world to me. It is now Easter and I have a five day weekend which I just I cannot tell you how badly I needed this time off so I'm going to be doing lots of reading over this five days I'm going to be binging a lot of Netflix as well but I should also have time to film quite a few videos so if there's anything you want to see from me leave me a comment down below and I will add it to my list of videos to film but without further ado let's get into reviewing the books. Now I'm actually going to start off by admitting that I lied to you. I have not quite finished Being Various, which is a short story collection edited by Lucy Caldwell, but I will be finishing it today. I don't have too many stories left, so I'm, I've read the bulk of it, okay? But this is pretty self-explanatory. It is a collection of short stories by lots of different Irish writers, some that are more well-established and well-known than others. It's the nature of it being a short story collection that there are going to be some of these that I didn't really enjoy as much, but some that I absolutely loved. And I must admit, it, unless there's another story in the last few that I absolutely adore. Nothing beats the first story in this collection for me. I absolutely loved it. The first story is called How I Fell in Love with the Well-Documented Life of Alexander Whelan by Yan Ji. And this is about a young woman who meets a guy and then adds him on Facebook afterwards and she has like feelings for him. She's got a little crush on him. She thinks it could be something that goes somewhere. And then she finds out that not long after he accepted her Facebook friend request, he died. And it's about her kind of coming to terms with building this idea of this person in her head and feeling hopeful of something that they could have together. And then that being taken away in such a devastating way. And it's kind of her continuing to build up this idea of this person through his social media. And I just loved that short story so much. I thought it was superb. So I must find out if they have written anything else because I just loved that story so much. If you are looking for a way to sample a lot of different Irish writers' work, then I would really recommend a collection like this. Let's stick with the fiction for grown-ups while we're here. I read When All Is Said by Anne Griffin. I finished this just yesterday evening, so it's quite fresh in my head. And this fulfilled the prompt to read an author that I'd never read from before, a new to me author. In this book, we are following 85 year old Maurice who goes to a bar and is raising five toasts to five people who have been significant throughout his life and through these toasts we are learning about his upbringing and his life we're learning about his marriage his relationship to his work his relationship or kind of lack thereof with his children it's such a tenderly told story and I think the lens of him being the age that he is coming towards the end of his life and reflecting is such a fascinating way to explore his life and really what came to the forefront of this for me was how repressed a lot of his emotions are and I think it's something that's typical of a lot of men of that generation but I think in a very particularly Irish way in the case of Maurice you can see how he was socialized in a particular way to repress a lot of his feelings and I also found his feelings towards his son really interesting. The book is addressed to his son who is a journalist that lives in America and there's definitely been a breakdown in that relationship and I found it really interesting thinking about that relationship between father and son when the father doesn't really know how to connect to his son doesn't really understand his son's work. I think this is a debut novel and I don't know if Anne Griffin has written anything else yet but I would be really intrigued to see if she has because I thought this was just fantastically told and it's not a particularly large novel either. I love when an author can cram lots of stuff into quite a short page number. I love that kind of succinctness of writing. So yeah I really loved this. I think if you enjoy Rachel Joyce's books then you would really like this one too. I also read The Woman Who Stole My Life by Marion keys this fulfilled the prompt to read a book that had green on the cover it's kind of become a tradition that i will read a chunky marion keys book every year for the irish readathon i love that kind of tradition in my reading calendar this one i really enjoyed i didn't love it as much as i did the break or grown-ups but i still really enjoyed the reading experience and that's what i kind of take away from marion keys's books is that she just tells a great story i did find the plot of this one slightly convoluted we are following a woman at different stages 
changes in her life. We are following her in the past and when her life is impacted by a condition that she develops that leads to her being hospitalized for quite a long time and she is paralyzed and unable to communicate. And we are hearing about that experience from her perspective and how difficult it was for her. But we are also following her in the present day and we know she has recovered from this. And in this present day, she is trying to write her second book. We know that she wrote an unexpectedly tremendously successful book and is really struggling with the second book. She's also struggling with the relationship she has with her son. Her son is a pain in the arse. And we also know that she has separated from her husband who she was with while she was in hospital. And throughout the book we're kind of piecing together how she got from point A to point B and eventually the timelines converge. So we're following all of these complicated relationships she has in her life, how those relationships are impacted by the success of her first book and her being kind of catapulted to celebrity. And we're also following the developing romance she has with one of her doctors. There is a lot of spinning plates in this book and I think the novel would have been fine if a couple of those plates were taken away. But in saying that, I still just had such a good time reading this book. Marion Key's books feel like books that, for me anyways, I can just sink into to and know I'm going to be told a really good story. What I will say about this book is that there are a couple of moments that literally just like throw away lines that are not okay. There's one line in particular around consent that I just find super like really dodgy and I do think this is something that does crop up with Marion Key's books occasionally is lines that I guess just haven't aged well and I think sometimes it's from a character and you're not meant to like agree with the character but I do think the very dodgy thing that happens around consent is not criticized at all. I just, I didn't, it, it made me feel icky. <laughs> but I think going into more Marion Keys books as I explore her backlist, I'm aware that there could be things like that and I'm like, I'm prepared for it. It's just such a shame because I think that one line did kind of really damage how much I enjoyed this book. I still had a really great time. I just wish that one line wasn't in it. Welcome to the portion of this wrap up, which I'm calling Irish women who are obsessed with the fact that they're Irish. I realise there's a certain irony here of me highlighting this trend. <laughs> Let's start with the one from this mini stack that I enjoyed the most. Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. So this is about a 22 year old woman named Ava who moves to Hong Kong to teach English to very privileged children. And much of the book discusses her kind of relationship with her own dialect, with her Irishness and how, how she speaks an Irish version of English. How there are particular phrases that only really exist in an Irish dialect and also particular pronunciations which she has to make herself aware of like the typical one being that Irish people don't typically pronounce a th sound. How she has to police her own linguistic behaviours because she should be teaching these kids proper English, whatever that is. And I found those discussions around language really really interesting and I think a lot of her observations of being an Irish person surrounded by lots of English people because that's the kind of social group that she has even when she's out in Hong Kong. I found a lot of her observations around that experience very nuanced and something that I definitely recognised in my own experiences of often being an Irish person surrounded by lots of English people. We're also looking at two different romantic relationships that she has. One with a guy who is a little bit older than her. Not hugely but I think the difference in life experience between her being 22 and him being 28, I think that is a pretty significant difference. He also has a much better financial situation than she does and he spends a lot of money on her. But it's one of those messy situations where like they're basically being boyfriend and girlfriend but they aren't boyfriend and girlfriend. And then when he goes away for a while we're following another romantic relationship that she has with a woman and I found that dynamic much more interesting. Reading about relationships between men and women that have a power imbalance is something that I've read a lot of, it's something that I'm really interested in but because I've read a lot of it I don't think that the author did anything kind of new or more interesting with that dynamic and that relationship that I hadn't seen before. So I felt like I was reading something, something that I'd just already read before. Whereas when we were looking at the relationship that she had with a woman, which actually, I don't think the, the woman and the man in this situation are hugely different kinds of people. I did find that female-female dynamic much more interesting. I found this book very funny. Like there were definitely lines in it that genuinely made me laugh and little observations that the author makes. 
This was very almost a five star for me. I think because there were just those aspects of it that felt like something that I had read before, it kind of detracted from my enjoyment of it. But it was such a quick read. I read this in like only a couple of sittings. I read it on mine and Aoife's live show. I'd be really excited to see what Nisha Dolan writes next because I think there's just so much potential in this book. I also read Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. I read that as part of my 24 hour reading vlog, um, which I also read this in. So I'll leave that link down below and in the cards. I'm not gonna talk about it in too much detail because I spoke about it in that vlog. And I really wanted to like this book more than I did. This book tells the story of a romantic relationship between a man and a woman, and it starts with them breaking up and then works its way backwards. I found that method of telling the story of this relationship so interesting because I think when you look back on a romantic relationship retrospectively, you can notice those signs that the relationship was never going to work out. But of course, it's easy to say that with high insight, like you don't realize those things when you're in the midst of the relationship. I found the discussions around heartbreak really, really touching. There were definitely moments where I saw my own experiences of heartbreak reflected and that was something that I found really validating. I did struggle with the fact that I know a lot about the author's life or I did know a version of her life that was presented on social media and I really struggled to disconnect the two. I also found a lot of the writing kind of very heavy-handed especially when it came to things like metaphors and I also found how the book engaged with its own Irishness, very laboured. It was trying to depict that experience of being a young Irish woman in London, which is something that I enjoy reading about, but it was done in quite a heavy-handed way where it was just kind of listing things about Ireland that English people maybe wouldn't have heard of. And I was just like, yeah, okay, I get it. Whereas I think like the observations on that kind of thing and what it's like to be an Irish person surrounded by English people were done really like interestingly in this. So I think reading them close together really highlighted the problems that I had with Out of Love in that regard. And I also read If Only by Melanie Murphy and I did not, I didn't like this. <laughs> this is about a young woman who has broken off the engagement with her fiance. She's gone home to Ireland, she's visited her granny and her granny tells her about this power that the women in her family have to be able to relive an If Only experience. So, so they can experience a version of that present day in their life if only they had done something differently. And this main character just makes the most boring decisions about what she would like to explore. I just, I don't understand. So like, what would her life be if only she had married the guy? If only she had got this other job? And also, the first thing that she explores is if only she had stuck to her fitness routine when she was at uni. And basically, it just explores what it would be like if she was thinner and I'm not here for it. <laughs> I think the angle that the author was going with was like, it demonstrated that she wasn't happy if she was thinner, but I just, I was like, yeah, okay, I get your point. I don't need 50 pages or however long it was. Like the point she's trying to make is so obvious that we don't need to spend time with it. Also, everyone in this book is fucking annoying. Didn't find any of the characters appealing in any way, especially the main character who is just remarkably privileged. She's working in this cafe and because of that, it makes her feel like she's skin, but she'll get a two grand loan from her dad. I can't be arsed. And it does just suffer from the same thing that the previous book did where it's talking a lot about being an Irish person in London but not in a particularly interesting way. I also read The Importance of Being Ashling by Imar Michalaisa and Sarah Breen. You know what I love about this book is that it's self-aware, it knows what it is and it doesn't pretend to be anything else. This is a book that is entirely structured around being hashtag relatable and I think where that difference between this and the previous two books are is because that relatability is the whole point of this book and I think in those other two books they're like trying to be deep. We're following 29 year old Ashling and what happens when she is made redundant. We're also following following all of the various complicated relationships she has with in her life, particularly the relationship she has with her boyfriend and how that situation is less than ideal. And there is so many like references to particular brands or places that are designed specifically to make the readers of this book go, oh my god, that is so me. And I am definitely not an Ashling. I don't feel like I am this woman, but I appreciate these books for what they are. They're fun. They don't try to be more deep than what they are. And I think these books are a lot more relatable for women who are from like a different part of Ireland than I'm from. But actually, as soon as I finished reading this book, I was so tempted to read the third book in the series because they're just such easy reading and so fun to get through. I mean, I didn't love this book, 
but I had a nice time. I also read Good Eggs by Rebecca Hardiman. This is the story of a kind of typical Dublin family and we are following it through the perspective of three different characters and three different generations of this family. So we're looking at it from the perspective of the grandmother who is quite eccentric in some ways. Um, she's a little bit rebellious. Um, she does a lot of shoplifting and at the start of the book she is arrested for that. We are then following her stepson who has been struggling to find work and adjusting to the idea of him not being a breadwinner in the household anymore and the insecurities that that brings to the forefront for him and we're also following his daughter who is struggling to fit in anywhere. She doesn't really understand her place in the world or her position in the family and I found the relationship between the granddaughter and the grandmother a really fun dynamic between these characters. The dad I didn't find particularly interesting. I think I maybe would have just preferred this book if it was just about the grandmother and the granddaughter. There are so many complications in all of these characters lives and you're essentially just following them as they muddle through those complications. The ending of the book is a bit weird. Like, I think you've kind of got to suspend your disbelief with it. It's a bit ridiculous I think. I didn't really believe it. I think it's probably a bit too long as well and I think maybe that's why I think just get rid of the dad character. It's not a new favourite but it was one that I really enjoyed and if you love those kind of intergenerational chaotic family kind of stories then you would really like this one. I read A Keeper by Graham Norton which was such a pleasant surprise for me. I read his first novel Holding last year and I thought it was fine but I didn't love it. This one I found far more compelling. So in this book we are following a woman called Elizabeth Keane who goes back to a house that she hasn't been to in a long time. It's her mother's house. Her mother has passed away and she has to deal with all of her belongings and that kind of thing. And she comes across a stash of letters that were written 40 years earlier. And this sends Elizabeth on this journey to find out more about her past. And we are following the story of her mother's history simultaneously alongside Elizabeth finding out what has happened. And it ends up taking quite a dark turn as we find out the history of this woman. Aspects of her life that Elizabeth, her daughter, had no idea about. And it raises a lot of questions for Elizabeth about her own identity and her own upbringing. I don't want to spoil anything about finding out what has happened, but it left me racing through the pages to find out. I'm really excited to read Graham Norton's new novel, which I think is called Homestretch, because I was kind of meh about reading his books after just reading his first one, but this has changed changed it. Love this. Okay, let's look at some books for younger readers. I read The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagadir. A complete just auto buy author for me. I will read anything and everything that she writes. I completely fell in love with her writing when I read The Henna Wars, which was our group read for the Irish Readathon. And I'm so glad that so many of you decided to pick this one up and join us reading this book. This is the kind of book that I have been crying out for. I have wanted it so much for such a long time. The plot of this young adult novel is centered around a business competition at a secondary school. Nishat is Bengali, so henna is something that she has a lot of experience experience with and cultural connection to and she decides to set up a henna business to try and win this business competition. But another group of girls at her school decide to do the same thing, but it's not something that is connected to their cultural heritage in any way. So there are a lot of conversations in this book around cultural appropriation. And I think the way that the author explores that and explains that through these characters is done a really fantastic way. And she really demonstrates the differences and nuances between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation. There are also a lot of conversations around Nishat exploring her own sexuality and she has recently come out as being a lesbian and we see how her parents initially just refuse to engage with this and think well if we don't talk about it it will just go away and that is a real struggle for Nishat and I will give a content warning that there is an outing in this book and I think what was really fantastic is that that content warning is at the start of the book. This book contains instances of racism, homophobia, bullying, and a character being outed. I wish more books had content warnings at the start of them. So she does deal with a lot of homophobia, but this is not a book that is, you know, a tragic queer story. This is a book that I actually found really celebratory and joyful. And the blossoming romance between Nishat and Flavia, who is a girl who is doing the henna for the other team, that romance was just done so sweetly. It was so cute. And I also found the experiences of being a teenager in Ireland, even though, you know, it's been a while since I was a teenager in Ireland. A lot of that stuff just still like completely rang true to me. Loved this. Loved it so much. I also read All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. Another auto-buy, auto-read author. I just cannot. <laughs> I need to 
I need to collect my thoughts. <laughs> this is another young adult novel and we are following our main character who is a teenage girl. She's not a bad kid by any means but school isn't something that you know kind of interests her. She does end up getting in a bit of trouble and one day when her punishment is to clean an old room in her school she comes across a tarot deck and gradually she begins to develop her understanding and appreciation for tarot and she realizes that she is very good at it. People at her school are asking her for readings and one day there is a conflict when a former friend of hers or someone who she's had a difficult relationship with you know they used to be friends they're not really friends anymore there is conflict when when her reading is done and then she disappears and our protagonist feels somehow responsible for that but she can't quite figure out how and over the course of the book we're learning more about the kind of powers that she has first of all irish witchy books are just i'm all over it like inject that shit into my veins but also oh man this book is so gay <laughs> there's just such fantastic breadth of queer representation in this book you know our main character her older sister is gay our main character is also developing a relationship with the older sibling of the girl who has gone missing and they are someone that is exploring their own sexuality and their own understanding of their gender and I think oh god the relationship between those two characters I just I loved it so so much. I read a digital arc of this book and when it comes out later this year I am going to be ordering a copy of it because it's a beautiful book visually but just oh I loved it I loved it so much. Also there is one of the best jokes that I have ever read in a book. It's like a like a pop culture reference, but it's just so seamlessly woven into the book and I just, I cackled. Loved it, I just, I, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Did I mention I loved it? I also read Toffee by Sarah Crossan. This is another young adult novel that is told in verse. I've read quite a few Sarah Crossan books before, uh, my favorite being her novel One. And the books I've read from her since haven't been my favorites. I found them quite hit and miss. And this was the one that I actually, enjoyed the most aside from one. In this book we are following a teenage girl named Alison who runs away from an abusive home situation. She has nowhere to go and she ends up hiding out in a shed of what she thinks is an abandoned house. But she soon discovers that there is actually an older woman living in this house who has dementia and she mistakes Alison for an old friend of hers called Toffee. Such an interesting dynamic that there is between these two characters because in many ways Alison is exploiting this old woman and exploiting her confusion but Alison doesn't see any other options of survival for herself. You know, she has run away from a really abusive situation that she cannot go back to. And the bond that does gradually develop between this teenager and this older woman is a tender bond, but it does have this very uncomfortable power dynamic to it. I think the author did a really superb job of highlighting the nuance and complications in that situation. And I think it also really highlighted the issues that a girl like Alison can face but also the issues that are faced by this older woman who is being neglected by the people who should be supporting her. I thought this novel was really great, you know, it's written in verse, you'll read it really quickly, I would really recommend it. And I have two non-fiction books to finish up this wrap up with. I read Maeve in America by Maeve Higgins. Yeah, this was another one that I unfortunately didn't like. <laughs> I actually listened to this one and didn't read it and I think maybe if I was reading it I would have DNF'd it. This is Maeve Higgins' memoir that follows her leaving her successful life in Ireland to try and chase something else in America. She wants to find out, you know, what this journey is going to bring for her, what kind of opportunity she would have. And over the course of the memoir, we are following her experiences of being in America, being an Irish person in America, and none of it was particularly interesting. She has this kind of warped idea of being an immigrant. Throughout the course of the memoir we witness her realize that her experiences of being an Irish immigrant in America is funnily enough quite different to the experience of lots of other immigrants. Ones that don't have the kind of privilege that she does. I just, I couldn't. This memoir isn't bad, I just don't think it says anything interesting. But I did read another memoir in March and I really really enjoyed it and that is On Shut by Una Min Kavanagh. When she was a baby Una Min was adopted from Vietnam by a woman from Kerry. Una Min then grew up in a very culturally Irish household. Her grandfather is someone who taught her a lot about the Irish language and really instilled that love for the Irish language in her. And a huge portion of this memoir is about her connection to her grandfather. And we're looking at Una Min's just love for Irish culture and I found that so touching. But we are also looking at her experiences of racism in Ireland. And I think racism in Ireland is something that we really don't talk about enough. We see the complete lack of understanding that there 
there is around different cultures. Una Min talks about one time when her grandfather was asked, well, how are you going to speak to her when she grows up and just speaks Vietnamese? And Una Min shares her experiences of racism, including a racist attack that she was victim to in Dublin City Centre, where she was racially abused verbally, but also spat at. It's just so infuriating that someone like her, who is a huge champion of Irish culture and a champion of the Irish language, who speaks fluent Irish and celebrates the Irish language at any possible point that she could, has to prove her Irishness, that she's seen by as not really being Irish, as, as being other. I don't speak Irish and I would never face that kind of prejudice and it just makes me so angry <laughs> that this woman has to like prove herself. This memoir was simultaneously a really heartwarming story of her love for that culture and her love for her grandfather, but it was also something that, like I said, it just made me so angry that there is this kind of prejudice in Ireland. If you are interested in learning more about the Irish language, then I think Una Min is a fantastic person to engage with and follow online. So there we have it. They are all of the books that I read in March. I think this may be my longest wrap up of the year. We'll see how good my editing skills are. <laughs> my TBR now stands at this number, which isn't quite less than 100 books like I wanted it to be at the end of the quarter. And it doesn't quite exactly tell the full story of my TBR either. I will be doing a video in a couple of days that is looking at my quarterly statistics and also how I've been doing on some of my reading goals for the year. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do. If you want to know anything more about any of the books that I've mentioned, they will all be linked down below in the description. And if you've read any of these books or you want to share any thoughts on them or you want to let me know what you're currently reading or what your favourite book was in March, please leave me a comment down below. I would love to have a chat with you guys. I hope you are doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you in my next video.